Let me just start off being blunt. I am a conservative Republican. I've had problems on social media with Facebook, with Twitter, not yet on YouTube. And I know all the negative things that social media does in its operations against people who are on the right. I don't doubt that for a second. I think it needs to be addressed. But at the same time, you know, nothing's all good or all bad. And there is some very many positive aspects of social media that I want to focus on in this video. And these are from a personal viewpoint, my own personal viewpoint. That's what I'm going to talk about. As I said, I've had innumerable problems on Facebook. Banned for this, couldn't do that. Same thing has happened to me several times on Twitter, uh, where I'll post something and for reasons I just cannot comprehend, and they don't always give you a very good reason. I can't do this or I can't do that. I've never been actually kicked off, but I've had problems. I know they censor people. I, I, I know it happens, and I, I read all about it, and I understand that, and that needs to be addressed. But from my own experience, I mean, something happened to me this year that made me really appreciate the value of social media. Now, what were those things? Last fall, for reasons I won't bore you with, I decided to retire. And I got in touch with my TIA CREF rep and started setting up, moving money around and getting ready for the retirement, which would be as of 1 September 2020, this past September. And the question was, and it has to do with how the university at which I used to work was a state university in North Carolina. If you set up an annuity, even if you have a private retirement, the state will pay your health care, your, your basically Medicare supplements, which would save me somewhere between two and three hundred dollars, depending on what I wanted to get. So it was a fair amount of money. So I decided I would set up the annuity, which would be safe. I'd get my free health care. And the way it works with TIA Craft, if I die in the first 10 years, the money that's accumulated doesn't just get taken by them. It'll still go to whoever I leave the money to. So it seemed like that was probably the best deal for me. And that's what I decided to do. Now, the question was, when should I lock up the money in the annuity? Because in the fall, the stock market was heading up toward where it topped off about 29000 And so I asked my advisor and she said, well, you can wait, you know, to the summer, do it then. You can. Technically, you do it in August. So that was my original plan. And that's where I was at the end of 2019. Then in January, things started to happen. Now, I didn't discern these things by watching the mainstream media. My wife is Korean, from Korea. She came here when she was around late teens. So she's an American citizen. But she, her usual routine in the morning, she gets up before me, she'll get a cup of coffee, and she'll sit at her desk and she'll watch Korean news, Korean language news from Korea, and YouTube Korean channels, uh, which are in Korean. Not Sometimes they're, they have a, a translated, sometimes they're not. And that's where she gets starts off her day with a lot of news. Usually I get up an hour to an hour and a half after her, I'll come in, I'll make my breakfast, and while I'm cooking and eating, she gives me the rundown of whatever she's seen, because sometimes she sees some really interesting stuff coming out of the Korean news that we don't get here, especially in this country, because so much of our, our news operations are focused on Trump and the Democrats, Trump and the Democrats, Trump and the Democrats, Russian collusion, and all this other stuff. It's as if nothing else is happening in much of the rest of the world. That's not the way it is in Korean news. They're covering things in China and Japan and all around the world. Now, about this time, she started telling me that she was seeing things on these Korean YouTube channels about some kind of virus epidemic that had broke out in Wuhan, China. Now, at this point, I wasn't seeing anything in the American news. This is early to mid-January. But the Koreans were coming in from China or coming back from China and going back and forth. And it was all over the Korean news. And they were starting to see cases. And then they had reports from people in Taiwan. There were reports from people in Hong Kong. And I, I was seeing all this news, and then I started searching for it on YouTube myself and in other places, finding some other things. Now, about the same time this is going on, I'm on Twitter, and one of the things I'm interested in is the Middle East. That's what I used to teach about the U.S. and the Middle East for decades. 
And I follow a lot of people who are either, uh, they're Iranian Americans, Iranians living in Europe, they have relatives in Iran, or they have connections in, in Iran. And sometimes the stuff is in Farsi, a lot of it's in English, but there is a Farsi translator on YouTube. So I can watch what's going on in Iran because I'm interested in what's going on internally in Iran and externally as it might influence the United States or foreign policy or military conflict. These are topics of interest to me. And as I was watching these uh, Iranian linked sources in the Western world, I started picking up on things that Iranians inside Iran were complaining about. And this is when the uh, virus was starting to spread. And you, there was a point where the Europeans started blocking flights from China. And the Iranians were basically, and this wasn't talked about in the Western media, the Iranians were flying the Chinese into, into Tehran and other cities in Iran, and then into Europe. And the Chinese who were stranded in Europe were being flown out of Europe to Iran and then taken to China. So basically the Iranians were outflanking the European efforts to prevent the Chinese from coming in, and they were flying them in. And one of the main airlines was this Mahan Air, which is actually run by the uh, uh, Republican Guard Corps. And the Iranian people who were talking about this were upset because there were rumors that this virus was spreading inside Iran, that these Chinese were coming in and bringing the virus with them and infecting Iranians. And of course, as we know, Iran has really been wrapped by this virus because initially they didn't respond to it because to respond to it would have to admit that they were doing what they were doing and they wouldn't admit that. So nothing was getting done and the bodies started piling up. We don't really know. We know the official figures the Iranians put out, but apparently it was much worse according to most of these other groups. So I'm getting all this information. Meanwhile, when I turn on the American media, all I see is impeachment. That was it. Impeachment, impeachment, impeachment. You look at the news, impeachment, impeachment, impeachment. That was, that was all I heard. I think one time Greg Gutfeld, uh, I saw once make a mention, maybe it was on The Five or his own show, I can't remember which. He made a mention that, you know, there's something perc percolating here with this virus that may turn out to be a really big story. That was in January. Tucker Carlson mentioned it one night. In any event, with all these things going on, I'm getting ready to retire, and I've got to move my money into an annuity. Because if a, if a market goes down, I'm going to get slaughtered waiting around. Because at this point, it's around 29000 and I was hoping it would go up a little higher. Higher it goes, more money I'll get when I switch into the annuity. But I started thinking, now, I, I'm not going to say that based on what I was seeing, I foresaw what was going to happen in this country. But what I did foresee was that if China was getting hit as hard as these Iranian and Korean sources were saying, and China is so central to the global economy, that if these stories were true, or even partially true, the stock market would take a dive. So on the 23rd of January, I still have the email on my account. 23rd of January, I emailed uh, my advisor from TIA Cref, and I said I wanted to lock it into the annuity now. 23rd of January. That was before Senator Burr infamously had his briefing and moved stuff out of his stock. So even Burr, with the help of the you know, CIA briefing about what was happening, uh, came, didn't understand what was happening sooner than I did, relying on basically YouTube and Twitter primarily, who I didn't see much of anything on Facebook. So I moved my money out and of course, Within, it took a couple days for the process actually was locked in. But right after that, the market just started to dive. It went from like 29,000 to 19,000 or something like that. Now, it's it, it since almost recovered all the way. But the thing is, if I had weighed it and then moved it in later, I could have lost as much of a third of my retirement. Or maybe even have to rethink retiring at all, which is something I did not want to do. I was just fed up with work and I wanted to get the hell out of there. But I moved the money while it was still at 29,000 and basically I didn't lose anything. Matter of fact, in late April, my advisor called me and she said, 
what did you know? How did you know what was going to happen? Because apparently not the other people she was dealing with were or moving theirs around until it was too late. And, and I explained to her, it was you know primarily uh, Sully, my wife, who's Korean, and what I was seeing on Twitter from Iranians. I mean, these are the two sources of news that, that led me to make the right financial move. I'm not a financial expert. You know, I don't read the Wall Street Journal for finance, uh, you know, Barron's or, or Bloomberg or any of these other things. I don't watch CNBC or, or Fox Business. I don't watch any of these things. I really don't pay much attention to the market. But here I was, I'm making these better market decisions than these financial experts. And what, what was the information I had? It was information from YouTube, Korean YouTube primarily, lesser other sources of YouTube, and Twitter. So, I mean, th this really struck me. And that, that's why I, I want to say something positive about, you know, social media. Positive in the sense that whatever its problems... You know, they pale compared to the problems in the mainstream media, which is even worse. I mean, I, I think it's really disgraceful that to think about the reality. If I had relied on the American media, television, radio, and print, you know, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, I would have lost about a third of my retirement. And the only reason I didn't was because I made decisions based on what I was seeing on YouTube, and Korean YouTube, Korean language YouTube uh, channels, and Twitter. I mean, that's the reality of these past few months for me. And as someone who's you know studied American politics and you know was even temporarily a pre-journalism major, to think about how much. The American media had, has let us down because of their focus on Trump, on Russia, on impeachment. Meanwhile, the global economy was collapsing. And by the time anybody in this country who relied on them knew it, it was too late. Other than for people like, like once the senators on the, uh, uh, the, the uh, intelligence committee, they apparently a hint of what was coming, but I knew before that. I don't have a clearance. I don't work for the CIA. I'm not intercepting Chinese communications or something like that. I'm watching YouTube and Twitter. How is it that I was able to make a better financial decision than earlier than people who have access to classified information? I mean, this makes no sense. So I think when we look at social media, and, and we dump on social media for being, you know, slanted, uh, for censorship, for their algorithms and all those things, you know, all of which are true, all of which need to be addressed. We need to keep in mind that as a news source, they're nevertheless in many ways better than the mainstream media. I wouldn't say mainstream media, I should say all the media, because this includes Fox News. They're all focused on impeachment. They were useless, essentially. I mean, if you weren't interested in impeachment and looking at all the other things going on around the world and coming in, you weren't going to learn anything there. You were, would be much better uh, uh, understanding what's happening in the world if you just watch YouTube and Twitter and, and to some degree Facebook. And I think that's a damning indictment of the American media. But also says something about social media. Again, as I said, I know they do all these negative things. I know they censor us. They've censored me. I've been shut down many times. Banned. I couldn't do this. I couldn't, I couldn't follow anybody. I couldn't retweet, you know, or, or on Facebook, I couldn't post videos. I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. This has happened many times. I won't bother you with the, the tales of the stories and the, the nonsense that I've seen go on. Nevertheless, it was like the elephant and the ants. I guess maybe that's a good way to describe it. You know, there are all these ants out there. And social media, you know, Twitter and Jack Dorsey and, and Facebook and, and uh, uh, YouTube, you know, they're out, out stamping on the ants. But there's so many ants, some of them get through. Yeah, Twitter shut down this person. They shut down this person. And YouTube blocked this person and shut down this account, eliminated that channel. But there's so many of them. 
And for every one that they shut down, there's 10 more that pop up and they just keep coming. And, and you know, it's not like a single video, I could say, or a single post on Twitter that I said, ah, you know, that, that was the key that made my decision. Here's this post. This I based everything on this. I didn't base any of my decisions on a single thing. It was, a you know, an aggregate. It was all the posts I saw. It was stuff coming out of uh, from Iranian sources, you know, a hundred of them, all saying comparable things, all suggesting comparable developments related to the Chinese and the virus. The same with the stuff that I saw on YouTube or Korea, you know, people, the film of they had gotten out of people walking down the street, dropping dead on the street, or at least going unconscious on the street. Bodies being carried around, people being thrown into vans and locked in, nailed into the, inside their houses. And I'm watching all this stuff. And, and no individual thing gave me the idea that, oh, something bad's going to happen. But if you look at the aggregate, you look at all these little pieces of information, and you assemble them in your own mind, I ultimately made the right decision that saved, you know, my, my retirement would have been 30% lower than it will be, it, than it is. I've since retired because of what I saw there. Whereas if I had relied on the American media, you know, I, I would have lost all that money. I would have lost a third of my retirement because they're useless. When the American media slants things with the narrative, Nothing leaks through because, you know, you go to CNN or MSNBC or, or even Fox, they're all going to tell you what they want to tell you. Nothing gets around the corners. There's nothing seeping through the seams. Whereas on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, although they're, they're stamping on the ants, there are other ants getting through. And actually, you know, my conclusion I've come to that I'm much better informed from Twitter about what's happening in Iran than I am from anything in the American media. I was much better advised about what was going on with the coronavirus from YouTube and from Twitter, lesser degree Facebook, than I was from anybody in the American media. Right wing, left wing media, it doesn't matter. Because the media controls the narrative far more than Jack Dorsey can control the narrative on Twitter. So you're much better off relying on social media, whatever its faults, than you are on the American media. I guess that's, that's the conclusion that I've come to. They're both left wing. They both push the narrative. But the mainstream media can control that narrative in a way that social media cannot. There's just too much out there. There's too many points of information coming in. You know, if you look at MSNBC or CNN, you can get an editor and say, well, we're not going to cover the story. We're not going to show video of what's going on in Portland because we have a narrative that's mostly peaceful protest. So we won't show that video. But you go to Twitter and there's six or seven people posting videos of what happened. And you can find out there. Now, you have to learn who these people are. You have to, you know, find the one and find out who he, who follows him and and then who he gets his stuff from. And you got Andy No and you got a couple of others. There's like three or four that I watch pretty closely. And you'll see what's going on in these cities. You'll see the pictures of here's this guy in Portland. And now here he's in Seattle two days later. And now he's in Atlanta. You know, you see this stuff that you're not going to see in any of the media. And maybe Dorsey doesn't want you to see that, but he can't control everything. There's too many of these separate points. And the news leaks through. I mean, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube may try to censor, but there's too many leaks. Something's always getting through. And if you pay attention, you can find it. And if you do your homework, you can figure out what's happening. And that was my experience dealing with this pandemic and just trying to figure out what I was going to do with my retirement. I want to make a plug for social media. And I want my appeal is, my recommendation is, if you're on the right and you get upset by what they do, and you have every reason to be upset, don't turn your back on them. Because despite all the efforts they put in, despite all the ants that they stomp on with their feet, trying to control the flow of information, they're failing. The information gets through and you just have to learn how to identify it 
find it, edit it yourself into your own narrative, and pursue that. What do you think? Leave a comment for me. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. Share the video with your friends. Let them know what, you know, if you think like I do, let them mull this over. And always remember, you know, stand firm, stand tall, resist the resistance. And you do that by keep fighting, keep fighting.